Hello, today we're going to be reviewing the ASUS EEEPC 1000HA. This is the uh, premier netbook uh, back probably in early 2010, maybe 2008. Probably older, I don't even know. I'll look it up. Uh, I bought this brand new from Amazon and it is still working. It is a great little machine. It's got two gigs of RAM. Uh, I think the N270 Atom processor, which is horrible, horribly slow. Uh, it did have a fan in here. The fan started making squeaking noises. Uh, so I kind of destroyed it here a little bit and the fan no longer spins. So it does get hot, but it doesn't overheat, it still works. Uh, you can see here it's got does have an Ethernet port. I think this is gigabit too, so that's kind of fancy for a little crappy machine like this. Uh, it's got a three USB slots, an SD card slot, VGA, and a little power slot. Uh, it does still have the battery, and the battery holds a charge for not long, but a little bit. Um, anyway, so what we're doing today is running. Let me found the power on it. Battery does hold a charge, but not long. Okay, and you can see a little red light. Um, I did put a little bit of paint over these LEDs a long time ago, because these LEDs are like little lasers shooting you in the eyeball. So just a little... Uh, enamel on there, cover those up a little bit. And you can see this thing's super dirty. Sat in the garage for a long time. Uh, recently wanted to try out the Google operating system on this. Uh, and it was recently released. And so this is a 32-bit processor. Hard to see there a little, let me see if I can pinch it up. Okay, there we go. So this is cloud ready and this is it booting in real time. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds to get to the point where we can log in. Get you a little closer here. Okay, and this is installed on the hard drive. I originally had it on a USB stick, and man, it was... You think 30 seconds to boot is a long time. It would take uh, about seven minutes, something like that. Uh, so you can see uh, we do have the thing with the screen already darkened because it's been taking so long to boot. Uh, it'll lighten up here in a second. Okay, and there's a uh, my great picture. And do a little login. Uh, you can see down here it has shut down, browse as guest, and uh, add a new person. Uh, it does have the correct time. The wireless is working. Now the battery does show fully charged, even though that it's it's, it's like seriously five minutes at the most. Uh, and this netbook does have a camera, which is <laughs> 1.3 megapixel. Uh, I used it a little bit yesterday. It's super grainy, uh, but it does work. Uh, and it does have uh, a fairly decent uh, usability. I mean, it's not going to be anything near what even your cell phone has these days. But uh, you can see it's still coming up. I think. My profile by default runs Hangout, so I'm going to block it here for just a second while I close it up. You don't really need to see who I'm contacting, do you? Okay. And let me uh, brighten the screen here. Okay. Uh, There it goes, all the way bright. 
So we should be booted up now. Uh, that was about a minute, I guess, a minute and a half. Um, so I ran the Octane benchmark on it yesterday and it was about 5,500. Uh, I don't really want to open it again, but you can see how slow this thing works, even for just normal web browsing. And it's totally the CPU of this thing. It is just pegged. And we can open up a terminal. That was a control alt T. We'll open up the Cro Shell. I'm not sure how to say it. But you can run top and you can actually see the CPU usage is real high. Uh, this thing does have only one core uh, and with hyper threading, so it shows up as two. So if we press, uh, what is it, H? Capital H. Uh, it doesn't even have the right top, so you can't even see it. Yeah, there it goes. If you press one, it'll show the threads and you can actually see it does have two CPUs. Uh, this is a real one and then a fake one. So you can see the load is uh, over two now, so it's using both of them fully. Uh, but it does not appear that really anything's causing troubles. There's no IO weight. Uh, it does show some idle here, but with the load being high, there's probably some piece of hardware in here that's having a problem. So we can leave that running in the background. Uh, this touchpad does support multi-touch, so I'm running two fingers down it right now, and it is scrolling correctly. And it scrolls fairly fast. Uh, it scrolls faster than an Android phone anyways, any, <laughs> most of the Android phones I've used. Um, so it is running, you know, I guess, what is this? Maybe 1024 by 600 resolution. I think that's about what all the uh, netbooks had at the, during this time. So we can run Octane here and we'll uh, click over here and you can see it's totally closing up the system. It's hardly even used while it's running. Even the screen updates, you can see it update, it's so slow. I'm not, I don't know if this is the slowest computer I've ever used, or even uh, run with Octane. I know it's the slowest one I have right now. Uh, this actually used to be my backup system. I had a USB drive attached to it, and it would just uh, collect backups. It was running elementary OS. Uh, Linux operating system and a crash plan and it would just collect backups which was great it ran fine I'd still be using it except that I moved it to a VM so I don't have to deal with that anymore uh, and again this the fans dead on this so it's always it's always a little risky running a a system that's supposed to have a fan uh, without a fan. So it's still running. And here's the two gigs of RAM. Uh, it's using just over just over one gig right now. So well, this is with the full operating system running, a couple browsers and running the benchmark. Uh, it was even lower today. <laughs> That's probably me uh, clicking back and forth is making it slower. Uh, well, there's the Octane score. That's probably the the worst Octane score of any system ever. Uh, I think even my Raspberry Pi is a little higher than that. I don't know. It, it, it does work, though, and it is a usable system. Um... You can see this maybe maybe four or five seconds just to get anything to uh, any page to open. All right, 
And so, let's see, hit running. It's about 50 degrees in the room here, and it's noticeably warm underneath it, so can't really leave the system running very long. But, uh, let's close all this stuff. If you're not familiar with Chrome OS, uh, this is a very easy way to test it out. Uh, this is a freely downloadable ISO. You just copy it to uh, a memory stick. Uh, there's an installer or you can do it live. Uh, run it live. Uh, so you can see here it's just Chromium OS. Uh, I've already done the, the check so it's the last update as of middle of March 2016. So this is uh, from Neverware, uh, this version of it. Uh, this is freely available on their website. Um, I do have Flash installed. It asks when you install if you want to install Flash 2. If you choose no, it'll just keep asking every single time. Um, so I did go ahead and install it. Uh, it also asks about uh, this Widevine content decryption module. Um, it is optional. I went ahead and installed it. Not exactly sure what it does. Probably should uninstall it at some point, but I'm not going to. Just using this for test purposes. This, this PC is uh, pretty useless beyond just doing testing. Yeah, I don't really have a purpose for it. So you can see the sign outs. Sign out here and sign in as a guest. Let's move it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, guest mode is enabled. And let's click on that and let that run. Uh, it does have the cloud version up there too, the, the version of the operating system. The screen is <laughs> seen better days. Now you can see login as guest, it just runs the browser. Uh, there's no apps. Which is good. You don't want guests doing anything. Let's load up uh, reddit.com, see what, how long that takes. That's about, what, seven seconds maybe? It's still kind of loading, but it's, it's usable. Uh, if you load up something a little bit more resource intensive, uh, CNN.com. It takes quite a bit longer. Um, CNN, um, you know, their page varies each day, but uh, they have a lot of Java, Java, some Flash, and some stuff like that, and it's really struggling right now. Uh, so anyways, that's the review of more of the Neverware's Cloud Ready Operating System or install of Chromium OS. More review of the operating system than it is of this system. I mean, this, this netbook is usable. If you really have nothing else, that's, <laughs> this is all you got. I mean, you do what you can, right? I wouldn't recommend running this piece of hardware. Uh, the operating system works fine though. Uh, even two gigs of RAM, minimal CPU. Um, I've run, as I mentioned, uh, elementary OS on this. Uh, and it, it ran okay. Um, it, you get frustrated, right? You don't want to use this very long. It's, uh, if you have anything, even, even your cell phone is probably faster than this PC. Um, so I guess that's the take home here is, does it work? Yeah, it does. And it, it actually works much better with the Chrome, Chromium OS, uh, with, with Cloud Ready Chromium OS, uh, than it does with, uh, uh, just a standard Linux install. Probably do a, maybe a minimal install with just a browser. But if you're going to use, you know, Firefox, Firefox really chunks on this thing. I mean, it's it kind of sucks. If you're going to use uh, Chrome, 
Uh, Chrome's pretty pretty fine if you just have one, maybe two tabs open. Uh, if you have uh, a bunch of add-ons and stuff like that, it just it makes it worse. Every each one you add, you can really feel it. Um, so for minimal install on a minimal PC, uh, this this you know it works. It uh, wouldn't want to play you know flash games or anything on it, but if you're just browsing the web, checking your mail. Yeah, why not?